All right, so now it's recording. So uh, well, again, uh, welcome everyone to Geomechanics uh, PG334. Uh, I hope you watched the video I told you to watch. Uh, there you will find the syllabus of the class, uh, which is over here. And uh, uh, probably the things uh, I'd like to discuss that are not in the syllabus and probably not in the video is I will try to have mostly uh, theoretical lectures on Monday and Wednesday and do uh, some work, uh, work especially in the homework on Friday, okay? So on Friday, try to bring your personal computer uh, so you can work on it. Uh, here in the syllabus, uh, you will find the dates of, of the exams. Uh, you will find uh, the schedule for every day uh, to know what we're gonna be working on. And uh, talking about the exams, I uh, received an email about, about changing the date of the first exam because you guys want to go to Oklahoma, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's okay with me. I'm very flexible uh, with times as long as we discuss this in advance, okay? So if we discuss this in advance and if we all agree, uh, I'm very flexible. Sometimes, you know, uh, there may be people that cannot make it and we might have to stick just for a minority that cannot make it. But as long as we can make arrangements, uh, we'll, we'll do that. Again, I'm very flexible with time in advance. I'm not flexible if you tell me the day before that uh, you cannot do things, okay? So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, so um, let, let's not talk about the exam today. We, we'll figure that later on. Probably I'll send you a survey or something like that. Uh, but we can definitely change that time. Um, again, here uh, you will find all the material that we're going to, to see. I'm scrolling very quickly. Uh, but uh, again, w watch the video and uh, read the syllabus. And, uh, and it, there is, uh, you'll find everything. Uh, one more thing that is not in the syllabus. It's uh, that I like that, that you are respectful for everyone. And during this time, uh, you're not watching YouTube or watching your Instagram and stuff like that on your computer. I mean, if you do it like, you know, your cell phone, nobody sees you, uh, that's okay. I, I, but if you are, you know, playing like you're seeing a cat dancing uh, and, and there's someone behind you uh, that gets uh, uh, his or her attention to that, then probably that's not good, right? You're not being respectful to others because you're having fun probably, but the other guy's trying to pay attention. Uh, and you are not helping to that. So when you work on your computer, when uh, just try to have material that we are seeing in class. And hope maybe a computer for you is gonna be very useful in this class, uh, bring your computer because everything is already <coughs> online. Uh, all my notes, all the homework, everything is online. Uh, you can start reading, you can go uh, at your own pace uh, sometimes if you cannot make it to lecture, you can still catch up with the videos I'm going to upload. Uh, but I, I strongly encourage you to come to class, okay? Uh, but everything, everything is here. Uh, I, I finished putting this together last semester and I still need to work a little bit more on the last chapter, but uh, everything is here and as I told you in my email, uh, I was hoping that you will read this first chapter on your own and uh, that you have some homework with you on Friday. Uh, so if you didn't read my emails, so that, that's, those are the, the news for today. But it's very easy, don't worry. Uh, the homework, it's about, uh, we'll go to that in a minute. It's about just looking at the data about how important geomechanics has been in the last uh, 10 years. Uh, basically, thanks to geomechanics and thanks to manipulation of permeability through hydraulic fracturing, now we're producing a lot more oil and gas than we were producing at some time. Uh, we thought that we went through a peak and now we're going through uh, uphill, another trend of production with time of oil and gas that has been very important for the U.S. economy and for other parts of, of the world. Actually, I couldn't make it last week because I was on a, on a teaching and consulting trip uh, uh, w talking about geomechanics and uh, for better 
handling unconventional in other parts of the world. So I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't make it, but I'm happy that I'm here today. But the, the main message here, guys, is that geomechanics is very important, especially for you, uh, because we're running out of conventional reservoirs, especially in the US. If you go to, go so to work somewhere else, uh, probably in big fields in the Middle East, still convention is very big. But in the US, uh, the, the picture is changing. Uh, I was trying to look for some data uh, today just to convince you about this. The homework is also uh, meant to convince you, but if you look at the main oil producers in the US, uh, you will find that at the top, okay, before we see the data, who do you think is at the top of all producing companies? Uh, US, US only. Let's keep this for the US. Exxon. Exxon, another one? EOG. Chevron. EOG, Chevron. Shell. Shell. Uh, another one? Another guess? <coughs> BP, uh, well, th th this was a kind of uh, a poll that I would have expected and I would have said also to myself some time ago. And uh, pr you would expect the major uh, companies <coughs> to be at the top, right? And they, they are, but look at this list. Chevron, Exxon, you said that. But then EOG, right there. Anadarko, Pioneer, all of those are unconventional uh, oil companies. They are producing nearly as much as the big major companies. So probably, you know, 20 years ago, uh, for a petroleum engineer, the, the trend was to go to the major companies. Work to, for Chevron, for Shell, uh, for Exxon. Uh, now this is changing. Uh, students are going to work to, for EOG, for Anadarko that was built by Oxy, uh, for Pioneer, for Devon, and especially for you guys in the US, if you remain in the US, it's very likely that you're going to go to work for some of these companies. And Exxon now is putting a lot of emphasis on uh, unconventionals, and they have this company, XTO, that is meant to produce unconventionals, mostly from the premium basis. So geomechanics is very important. Uh, and I hope that this is a very good motivation for you um, to pay attention in this class. Uh, yesterday, I was talking to some of the students from my class. I don't remember if it was last fall or last spring. But you know, I don't want to brag about this. But I, I want to tell you what they told me. They told me that this class was the most single, the most useful class they have ever taken in the program because they were exactly doing what they learned in this class in their work. Probably, you know, when you go to work for a company, they'll teach you a, a slightly different way or they teach you some uh, more advanced way of, of handling the data, but the basics are the same. The fundamentals are, are the same. And if you do well in this class, you have a, a head start related to other people. Uh, especially to those other programs that do not have geomechanics in their curricula, which there are still uh, a few. But uh, I think, you know, uh, we started uh, having geomechanics in UT about uh, 10 years ago, uh, thanks to Professor Olson. He started that. He put it as a, a mandatory class, a required class, and now you, you have to take it. Uh, but, uh, I think it's, it's very useful for you, and I hope that you enjoy the class. Sometimes I get a little bit boring, so uh, you, you may you know, feel tempted to sleep, but, uh, but I'll try to change that, okay? And, uh, and uh, again, this is going to be a very important class, and I hope that you take advantage of it. So, um, since we lost already uh, three lectures, uh, I, I need to be a little bit quick, okay, in order to catch up with the schedule. So for the first uh, chapter, uh, I, I hope 
please read it on your own. Uh, the main message is geomechanics is very important. Okay? Uh, and geomechanics uh, is not only not only uh, fracking, uh, let me see if this works, I don't throw the camera. Oh, what's going on? Something funny going there. I don't know why I cannot, you can see? Okay, so probably it's a configuration, let me see. Mm. Uh, okay, so let me try the hard way. So guys, do you have any questions? Uh, any question about the syllabus? Uh, no? E everything okay? You agree with the rules of the game? So those are the rules of the game, okay? Uh, pay attention to the to the grades uh, and how they are distributed. Uh, it's very important that that you do homework and also that uh, you do your exams well. As I told you before, if you have to miss sometimes lectures, that's okay. But uh, I encourage you to to come uh, to here to to the lectures and that with the things I'm going to say in lectures, it's going to be much easier to understand. Uh, some of the material. Uh, all right, so let's see. All right, now it's okay. All right, so just a, as a very fast introduction, uh, geomechanics, it's, it's a, a lot more than, than fracturing, but fracturing now is the most important part of it. Uh, um, let me zoom this. Over here. Okay. Um, geomechanics is also about exploration. Uh, big waves are basically the elastic waves. So understanding elastic waves uh, is going to help you understand, for example, for example, uh, seismic data, seismic prospection. Uh, when we drill, we also need to guarantee. Uh, wellbore stability, and that's also related to geomechanics. We're going to see one entire chapter about the mechanistic approach for uh, wellbore stability. And uh, also, when we produce a reservoir, we're compacting the reservoir. Uh, that compaction is also a, a geomechanical problem. Uh, of course, when we fracture, that depends on geomechanics, but also when we get uh, produce water or backflow water. What we do with that water has to do uh, has to do a lot with uh, geomechanics. <coughs> Are you guys aware of the induced seismicity in Oklahoma? Uh, that was caused by uh, injection of backflow water and produced water from EOR. And uh, when you pressurize a reservoir too much. Uh, as we're going to see later on, the effective stress or the stress that holds together the rock decreases and makes faults to reactivate or to slide again. And that uh, process of sliding again uh, causes induced uh, seismicity. Um, all of that has to do with geomechanics. We're also going to see later on an approach about how to calculate how close we are to the reactivation of faults. For example, uh, when you are injecting a fluid, you don't want to produce induced seismicity, right? But sometimes when we do hydraulic fracturing, uh, we also reactivate small fractures, and that's very useful to see where the fracture is going. And that's a small seismicity is called micro seismicity. We're going to be talking a lot about that too, and everything is related to about how rocks deform and how rocks uh, break. Uh, but geomechanics, it's, it's everywhere. It's uh, in exploration, it's in drilling, it's in completion, 
it's in production, and even it's in waste disposal and later in well abandonment. All right, so the first thing that we have to do uh, for geomechanics uh, in order to get started uh, is to know what the stress is in the subsurface. And before we go to stress, let's talk about pore pressure because that's gonna help us uh, get there. This screen is kind of small, right? Uh, next time I'll try to, to figure it out uh, to make it a little bit bigger. And you guys in the back see well or not? Probably you squint your eyes maybe. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to improve this, okay? For next class or for, for this one. Uh, let me kill here the autofocus. Okay. So uh, who can tell me what is the gradient of pore pressure? Uh, t t tell me a number. <coughs> 0.433 what? PSI. Okay, let's say 0.43 uh, PSI per foot. That's what is called the hydrostatic pore pressure gradient. And hydro means water, static means that it's not moving. It's the column of a fluid that is not moving. And in this case, this number 4.3, it's uh, related to the density of water. If we had a heavier fluid, that one would be bigger. So uh, what I'm drawing here is Barton Springs. Uh, and the deeper you go, the, the more pressure you're going to feel, right? And uh, let me here make a, a plot of pore pressure with depth, uh, we know that if we dive to the bottom, the pressure is going to increase. And according to, uh, to this gradient, the pore pressure is going to be the density of the water times the constant of gravity times the depth z, where this is the depth z. And it's a linear relationship.